Hey everyone, this is Scott here again with a new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, you'll be learning how to calculate your probability of making a profit on basically any option trading strategy. So whether you are selling naked puts or naked calls, or if you're buying puts and calls, if you're selling iron condors, buying debit spreads, selling strangles, whatever the case may be, you can use the technique taught in this video to calculate your probability of making a profit on all of these strategies and more. And if that sounds interesting to you, then please do me a favor and hit the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future content. And quickly before getting started here, I just want to announce that you can also find me on Skillshare, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a two-week free trial. And so with that being said, let's jump on over to my trading platform now and we'll get things started. Okay, welcome to my trading platform here. And the stock we'll be looking at today is going to be Apple. So what you're seeing down here is just a one year price action chart of Apple stock. And first, just to give you some brief context around why I think calculating your probability of profit is so important is if I come on over to my spreadsheet here, this is where I track all of my trades for each month. So obviously, as you can see, this is my March 2021 trade tracking spreadsheet. And if I come over to the left now, you can see that one, all the trades that I have made this past month, I have them organized by their position category. So for example, these are all the naked puts that I sold over the month of March. And for each one of my trades, I do like to track a lot of different metrics and statistics so that I can go over these trades once I'm done with the month and really analyze them to figure out where I can improve things, where I went wrong, et cetera, et cetera. And so one of the metrics that I love to track is my POP or my probability of profit. That's what POP stands for. And so as you can see down here, most of my POPs are pretty consistent. They obviously do fluctuate. Some are above 80%, meaning with this particular put option that I sold on BLNK or Blink Charging, for this trade here, I had an over 80% chance of making a profit on that trade. And some of the trades are down in the 60%, but they're all pretty consistently around 70% or so. And so tracking this metric is a great way to make sure you are staying consistent with your trading. Success in trading, no matter what strategy you're using or what financial product you are trading, Consistency is key. And so making sure that all the trades that I put on have around the same chance of turning a profit is one of the ways that I ensure I am staying consistent with my trading. So that being said, how do you actually calculate those numbers using your trading platform? Now, of course, I'm showing you how I do it in Thinkorswim. And so for other platforms, the process may be a bit different, but I would expect that most other trading platforms do offer the features I'm going to use to figure out these probabilities here. So for example, if I go over to the trade tab now and take a look at the option chain on Apple stock, let's go into the May expiration cycle here and I'll scroll down just a little bit. So as always on the left-hand side, these are all the call options. On the right-hand side, these are all the puts and down the middle here, these are all the different strike prices that you can choose and all these contracts expire on May 21st. So let's walk through a few different examples here. In the first example, let's start things off with something very simple. So let's say I am bullish on Apple and I want to sell an out of the money put option. So for example, I might want to sell this option right here. This is the 115 strike put option. And looking at the bid and ask prices, I could sell this option for about 340 bucks. So this is going to be my position. And now as I've pointed out in my other YouTube videos, you can see in this column right here, these are all the different probabilities of these options being in the money by the expiration date, right? You can see at the top here in the column header, Prob ITM in the money. That's what it stands for. So with the 115 strike put option, there's about a 36.11% chance that this option by May 21st becomes in the money, which is the same thing as saying there's about a 36% chance of Apple falling down to or below 115 bucks per share by the expiration date. So that's definitely useful to know, but this is not the probability of making a profit on the trade. And that's because I can sell this option for 340 bucks and I can use that money to help offset any losses I might incur if Apple does actually fall below 115 by the expiration date. So for example, if Apple fell to 114 by May 21st, then this option would be in the money. I would most likely get assigned on it. And through the process of having to buy 100 shares of Apple at a price of 115, 
and then selling them back in the market at a price of only 114, I would lose 100 bucks on that transaction. But if I still sold this put option for 340 bucks, then I would still walk away with 240 in profit. So really my break even point is going to be below my strike price here. And specifically it's going to be my strike price minus the amount of money I sell this put option for on a per share basis. So I could sell this option in total for 340 bucks. And because this option is tied to 100 shares, that means on a per share basis, I could sell this put for $3.40. So 115 minus $3.40 gives me a break even price of $111.60. Apple can fall all the way down to that price by May 21st and I will at least break even and walk away having made or lost no money. So then that means if Apple ended up just one penny higher than 111.60, I could walk away with a small tiny little profit. And so now based on these probabilities, we want to figure out the chance that Apple stays above my break even point. That Apple stays above 111.60 so that I can at least make $1 on the trade. Now there is some pretty simple arithmetic you can use with a calculator to figure that out based on just looking at these probabilities here. But Thinkorswim does offer you a nice tool that makes the process much easier and also very visual. So for example, I can set up the order first, which you can now see down here, right, selling one contract. 115 strike put option, and I would set my price at $3.40. And then what I can do is right click on this order and go to analyze trade. Click on that, and that brings me over to the analyze tab now, which will show me the profit and loss diagram for this particular position. So on the bottom here on the x axis, this represents the price of Apple stock and where it can move around over the course of this trade. And my cursor here will basically act as Apple stock. And then on the y axis here, this will show you your profit or loss based on where Apple moves around. And for the purpose of this video, just focus on this blue line right here. This blue line is my profit and loss diagram based on the expiration date. The purple one here also shows me my profit and loss for this position, but based on today's date, not the expiration date. So like I said, for right now, for this video, just ignore this purple line. And now if you'll notice this little red tick right here, this is my break even point on the trade. So if I hover my cursor over this red tick, and then if you follow the gray line down to the X axis, you can see sure enough, it ends up right around $111.60. And so that's why to the left of this red tick, looking at the Y axis now, if Apple falls below this price, I will start losing money. And then conversely, if Apple stays above this red tick, I will start making money up to the maximum amount of 340 bucks. That's what I sold the put option for. So that's why above 115, above my strike price, I simply keep the full amount of money I sold the put for, and that's why the blue line here is totally flat after 115. So now I can use this to figure out my probability of making a profit on the trade. And all I have to do is first go up to this box and make sure the date that's shown here represents the expiration date of the contract I sold. So this put option is in the May expiration cycle, so I just click on May 21st, and now you'll see some percentages show up on this chart right here. And these percentages show you the probability of Apple staying within a certain range. So for example, this 37.04% is the probability that Apple, by the expiration date, by May 21st, is somewhere in between 105.47, this number down here, somewhere in between that price and 121.34. There's about a 37% chance that by May 21st, Apple is somewhere within this price range. And then same thing for this number here. There's about a 31% chance that by May 21st, Apple is above 121.26 and below 136.89. And then as a final example, about a 15.9% chance that by the expiration date, Apple is just above 136.90 down here. Right, there are no more dashed lines, so this area over here is simply the chance that Apple is above this price down here. And same thing for this guy over here, about a 15.9% chance that Apple is somewhere below 105.41. And so with the naked put option, I simply want Apple to be above my break even point, right? Because beyond this red tick, I will make at least $1 on the trade. So what I can do is simply drag this dotted line right here over to my red tick just like that, and that will now change the probabilities 
because I have now changed the ranges here. So now there's a 24% chance that Apple by May 21st is somewhere within this price range. And then of course these numbers have not changed. So if for this put option all I care about is Apple being above my break even point of 111.60 that you can see down here, then all I have to do is simply add up these three probabilities because I don't care if Apple by the expiration date is somewhere within this range or in this range or beyond, right? Because in all three scenarios, I would still walk away with at least some profit. So I can just pull up the calculator here and then take 24.05, 24.05. And I know these numbers are changing a bit, but the final result will still be very accurate. So 24.05 plus 31.24, 31.24 plus 15.86, 15.86, enter, and the final answer is 71.15%. So what this means is there's a 71.15% chance that by the expiration date, Apple is above my break-even point. Or in other words, a 71% chance that I walk away from this trade with at least $1 in profit. So now let's look at a second example with a totally different option trading strategy. So now instead of selling a naked put option, what if I wanted to buy a call debit spread? And don't worry if you are not familiar with some of these option trading strategies, it is totally irrelevant for this video, but I do also have a separate video taking a deep dive into the call debit spread, and I will post a card above linking to it so you can watch it later. But for the call debit spread here, I'm just going to be buying a slightly in the money option. So I'll buy this 120 strike call option, and then also sell at the same time another call option that is slightly further away. That's all the call debit spread is. It's a bullish option buying strategy. So I can right click on the 120 strike call option, go to buy, and then go to vertical. And that's because these spreads are also referred to as vertical spreads. And so I'll just stick with the default strikes here, I'm going to buy one contract of the 120 strike call option, and then at the same time, sell one contract of the 125 strike call option. And the total debit you would have to pay to put on this position is $228. So this is a very different kind of strategy than just selling a naked put. In this case, we are still technically buying options. We have to pay money to get into this position as opposed to taking in money initially. And now we're also dealing with two options at the same time. But you can still use the Analyze tab to very easily figure out your probability of making a profit on the trade. So once again, I'm going to right click on the order and go to Analyze Trade. And I do also have to delete this naked put. So we just focus on the call debit spread by itself. So very similar, this is the payoff diagram for the call debit spread I have chosen here. And it's a bit hard to see, but you can still make out the small red tick on the blue curve, which represents my break even price. So again, if I hover my cursor over that price point, you'll see that's right around $122 and it should be 28 cents. It's hard to get my cursor exactly over the number, so it says 122.26, but the true break even price point is $122.28, close enough. And so above this price point, if Apple ends up above that price by the expiration date, I will make some money on the trade, up to a maximum of $272. And then conversely, if Apple ends up below that price point by the expiration date, I will lose money. So just like before with the naked put option, just first make sure the date here represents the expiration date of the option strategy I'm using. So it's still May 21st, that's good. And then now I can drag this dotted line right here directly over my break even price. So right there. And so as with the naked put, I don't care where Apple ends up as long as it's to the right of that red tick. So anywhere within this range or beyond, I will still make some sort of profit on this trade. So in that case, pulling up the calculator again, I can just add up 28.52 and 15.87. So 28.52 plus 15.87 equals 44.39%. This is the chance that Apple by the expiration date is above my break even point. And therefore I have about a 44% chance of making money on the trade. Very simple. And lastly, as a final example, I'll show you a third different kind of strategy that is very different from the first two. And so now what if I was more directionally neutral on Apple and I wanted to sell a strangle on the stock, which is the combination of selling an out of the money call option and an out of the money put option at the same time. So for example, I might wanna sell this call option here. This is the 135 strike call option. 
and then also sell the 110 strike put option. So I can right click here and go to sell and then go to strangle. So we're going to sell one contract of the 135 strike call option. So that's going to be right here and then also sell one contract of the 110 strike put option. And for selling both of these options, I would take in 366 bucks for doing so. So just like with the put option, Apple can move beyond my strike prices for either the put or the call, and I can use this money to help offset losses. So that means Apple can fall a full $3.66 below 110. So that would be down to $106.34 or it could rally a full $3.66 above my 135 strike call option. So it could go all the way to $138.66, and I would still at least break even on this trade. And so one more time, right click on the order, go to analyze trade, and then delete the call debit spread here. And so now you'll notice I have two red ticks on this blue curve, right? Because as I just explained, there are two break even points with the strangle, one on the call side and one on the put side. So the only difference here is I just have to move these dotted lines onto both of my breakeven points. So first I'll move this one on top of this red tick, and then I'll move this one on top of the other red tick right there. And so with the strangle, because I don't want Apple to exceed these breakeven points, right, that means I want Apple to stay in between this very large range right here. If by May 21st Apple ends up somewhere in this price range, I will walk away with at least some profit, which means in this case, I only care about these two probabilities right here. The chance that Apple stays within this range and the chance that Apple stays within this range. Because all I have to do is add them together and that will give me the total probability of Apple remaining within this entire range. So bringing up the calculator one last time, if I take 37.77, so 37.77 plus 30.92, 30.92, that gives me 68.69. A 68.69% chance that Apple will stay in between my break even points by May 21st, and as a result, I would walk away with at least $1 on the trade. And so that's it. I hope you found this to be a very intuitive and rather easy process to figure out. And I do also know I only showed you three different option trading strategies, and there are many, many, many others. So I would definitely say to just play around with this on your own and try as many different option trading strategies as possible because the more you do this, the more sense it will make and the easier and faster it will be to calculate these probabilities. And so that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it and please let me know your thoughts or if you've got questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you wanna take some in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses, links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and make sure those notifications are turned on. I'll be dropping new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't wanna miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.